Hey everyone, welcome to another episode on the Asian Hustle Network podcast. Today we have James Bong. James Bong is an entrepreneur based in Vietnam. James, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Brian. Uh, really uh, an honor to be uh, invited. Uh, and uh, I'm a big fan of you guys. I'm a big fan of the community. Uh, so uh, it's great to be on today. Awesome. We're also a big fan of you as well. But James, uh, can you give us a, a story, I mean, background about, about yourself and about your entrepreneurship journey and where, where you're from? Sure, sure. I, I grew up a little bit in Vietnam, uh, born and grew up a little bit in Vietnam and, uh, you know, went to the U.S. Uh, and uh, pretty much, uh, you know, was an engineer. I went to Berkeley for engineering for ECS. Uh, so I was doing chip design, uh, basically logic design. Uh, and, and work in Silicon Valley for many years, uh, trying to pursue the, uh, the technical track to be a CTO. Uh, but, uh, you know, after a, a couple of uh, sort of uh, aha moment, uh, I decided that uh, I should uh, pursue business. Uh, so I went back to get my MBA from Berkeley's uh, Haas Business School. Uh, and then went out to do product management uh, for a couple of years. Uh, but so got so bored, uh, not, not because of product management. Product management by itself is, is quite interesting, but I got bored... Uh, just you know being in the semiconductor industry i want to do something i also have this uh um, love for startups and and, and uh, so i i am um, i decided to try to break into the uh the vc industry uh and uh the the most formal way in the u.s to break into the vc industry is, is through the coffin fellows program so i i applied to that and and uh, got selected i was connected with a different a few different funds that was hiring uh partners at the time and um you know uh uh, by by chance, I uh, was connected uh, with IDG Ventures. Um, so they uh, it's, it's a U.S. Uh, investor, uh, you know, basically U.S. money, uh, U.S. fund. But uh, they uh, actually started in in China uh, in the early days and, and were very very successful. Uh, so you know, um, they wanted to do a fund for Vietnam, and and uh, I was like, yeah, wow, that sounds super interesting. So um, basically, uh, I was part of a hundred million dollar fund uh, investing in Vietnam. Uh, and that took me back to, from Silicon Valley back to Vietnam in 2008. Uh, and I was investing as an investor for about six years, uh, basically one company per year. So I did six companies, uh, exited three, very fortunately. Um, and then I decided that, you know, uh, at that time, 100 million for Vietnam was a lot of money. Um, and we were the first VC in, in the country. Uh, not a lot of uh, company to back at that time. We pretty much back all the good ones. Uh, and uh, actually, one of them is a unicorn now, uh, VNG. Uh, they might be listing uh, in in, uh, in the Nasdaq in the US soon. Um, and uh, I decided that you know, well, you know, there's not a lot of good companies, but there's a lot of interesting opportunities. So you know, let me go and and actually try to be a founder. Uh, it's a little bit kind of reversed. Right? Usually, people do startup and then they become investor. I kind of did the other way around. Um, but I wanted to, to, to really get the experience so that I can be good on both sides. And, and uh, so, you know, basically did a, a startup uh, and then, uh, um, you know, four years later, it's, it's kind of like the Reddit uh, of, of Vietnam. And four years later, uh, it was acquired by Line. It's a Japanese app uh, uh, company that, that's listed also on the NASDAQ. Uh, and, um, you know, this is my second company in FINA. I just launched that uh, four years ago. Uh, but we still we started out in uh, uh, doing NFT for real estate, uh, but real world real estate, not none of us. Um, and and uh, and then uh, morph it slowly uh, to to just purely uh, fractional ownership in real estate. And then uh, last year we um, because of the pandemic and, and the stock market getting really really uh, uh, you know uh, run up a lot, uh, and we decided that you know there's easier um, asset class that we could uh, also surf um and uh, we expanded the uh the app and, and call it we re rebranded to infina so that we can do stock trading we can do mutual funds we can do fixed income products as well as real estate uh sorry for the really really long introduction but that's kind of the journey yeah no no it's not it's not long at all right and i think uh i think it's really cool hearing your progression of what you always wanted right going to school studying coming back to get your mba getting to vc moving from silicon valley to vietnam Let's dive deep into each stage, each stage of your life, right? I know you were working as a engineer before this, this your whole entire adventure. What were what were your, what were your parents' expectations at the time when you graduated undergrad? What did they want from you, and what did you want from yourself? Uh, my parents, uh, uh, uh great parents. Um, 
I, I wouldn't say the best in the world. I would say that for, for me, um, but but obviously everybody's parents, or most people's parents are the best in the world to them. Um, no, I, I, I just, you know, all kidding aside, I, I am really grateful to have a very good parents who, who, um, who allow me to, in, in a way, kind of set my own path. Um, they're so supportive, uh, in a way too supportive sometimes is that I wish you guys pushed me harder, uh, you know, and, and, uh, but, but, uh, super supportive, um, you know, and always very inspiring. It's like always saying, Hey, you know, you're meant for bigger things, uh, ever since I was, uh, very young, um, you know, so, uh, I chose engineering because at that time, I mean, you know, I, I started, uh, learning English when I was 12 in the U S uh, so didn't really, uh, uh, couldn't really choose like, um, you know, majors that, that really require really um, strong English, like maybe social sciences, uh, but uh, other humanities. Um, so I had to, you know, to go the go down the, the, the kind of the typical Asian path uh, for many people, um, you know, engineering uh, or, or science and, and uh, chose engineering and did you know, electrical and uh, happened to be a good choice. <laughs> and then, you know, Silicon Valley and the whole, the whole thing. So, it, it, you know, uh, but, but, you know, it was basically one, one thing led to another and kept morphing my career uh, into different shapes and, and forms. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I wish I had parents just like yours. I, I don't know why, but in Asian culture, I feel like it's so common among myself and my cousins to have our Asian parents tell us that, you know, everybody has a destiny they have to follow and it's hard to break that destiny. Uh, I don't, I, and it's really refreshing to hear that your parents are like, you can do anything you want to do. Right. My parents are like always telling me to, to find things that bring me the most comfort in life, which means a lot of it is putting me inside a box. Like don't be an entrepreneur. Don't, don't, don't try to like, you know, be in VC or anything. And ironically, I got into both fields. Right. It's <laughs> nice, what I really nice. enjoy. And yeah. I just want to like dive into the part where you mentioned that you went to like a formal track of VC. I actually haven't really yeah. heard of that track, like a formal yeah. track in venture capital. Can you talk a little, bit more, yeah. a little bit more about that? Sure, sure. So, you know, uh, in the US especially, it's really, really hard to break into the VC industry. Uh, VC, VC industry also traditionally uh, have very low demand in, in terms of recruiting. Um, so they, uh, you know, the investor, they, they tend to also not, not lean a lot of people, you know, usually in a VC firm, there's the general partner, uh, and then they have a, a few associates running around doing uh, meeting people and, and doing uh, analysis. And then that's kind of uh, it. Um, you know, sometimes they have one more layer, you know, like the even junior people to do a lot of the desk work and, and research and everything. Um, but uh, so they rarely uh, have, have uh, any kind of formal hiring. So usually um, through their own network and, you know, VC usually know a lot of people because, you know, all day long they meet entrepreneurs, they meet people to hire for entrepreneurs, uh, you know, and, and, and they meet company that they have already backed. And, and so uh, in, in that network, it, in, incredibly good network, um, they usually can find, you know, uh, another person they can bring in as a partner. Um, and usually they would bring in successful uh, founders they have backed before. Uh, even if they're not successful, but they, they felt like, wow, you know, this person is super smart. Um, you know, they fail in, 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 in building a company, but but I really love the insight. They would make a good partner. So usually that's how they would find their uh, um, partners uh, or even associate to bring into the fund, uh, to fund, to the fund. Um, but the Common Fellows Program um, want to, in a way, formalize it more. It's, it's almost also like a postdoc, um, you know, for people that, that I want to be a VC. Um, so, you know, you usually, uh, people that get into that program already have the MB MBA, they, they have even some of them PhD, some of them are, uh, actually medical doctors. Um, and uh, it, it's a way where, um, you know, they want to, so the mission, uh, Common Fellows mission is to select, uh, network and groom future leaders in venture capital. Um, and there's also a, a kind of a secondary um, uh, unofficial mandate, which is to spread the, the VC model globally. Uh, and, and so um, the, the program is always very active in terms of like getting, finding people that want to be a VC and always want to start a VC fund uh, in, uh, in emerging markets and, you know, outside of the US also. So um, just a quick note on that is like when, when I was a, um, I mean, when I was a Coffin Fellow back in 2008, uh, I was the only kind of crazy one in Southeast Asia and definitely nobody have ever heard of like doing venture capital in, in Vietnam. Um, so when I, when I met with sort of the, my cohort, my class, um, 
you know, I was class 12, uh, you know, a lot of the, the other guys was like, wow, that's interesting. But, but there was not a lot of sort of collaboration because they couldn't really do any deals in Vietnam. Um, you know, now VC is a lot more global, but at the time it's like really local, like, okay, I, I need to be able to drive to, to where you are before I can invest. Um, but I mean, going back is, it's, uh, going back to, you know, the, the, the point was that, um, it was so early and, and it was, it was, it was, uh, you know, I was the only guy in Southeast Asia. Now there's at least 50 uh, of us in, in Southeast Asia based mostly in Singapore, um, and, and started many different funds. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, that, that's a little bit about the program. That's awesome to hear. I mean, I think it's really cool, right? I think what you mentioned about funds to get into VC, it's very, very difficult. Uh, right. I mean, it's it's a highly, it's like who you know type of thing. It's uh, yeah. not really about qualifications, it's about who you know. Because <laughs> essentially you're dealing with a lot of private capital and, you know, a lot, there's a lot of trust with that much money. Like you're talking about like hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars getting passed through. And you, you want to make sure that you trust the right people around you. And most of the time you trust them by, by working with them before or former interactions and trusting them as founders. Right. Um, but sure. I'm really glad that you broke into quote unquote, the wild, wild Southeast Asia <laughs> and, and breaking into VC in 2008 in Vietnam. I can't imagine what the realm was like, how you even vet deals, how do you deal with the <laughs> government? You know, it's, I don't right, even right. know, man, just kind of walk us through that too. I'm kind of curious, like boxes in like 2008 yeah. investing in tech company in Vietnam. What is that like? Yeah, so you know, uh, even before I decided to to uh, come to Vietnam, uh, it, it was actually a year and a half before I, I finally landed uh, in Vietnam to to uh, to start the job. Um, you know, and, and exactly kind of your 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 uh, view as well is like, okay, well, what, what's there to invest? Like, you know, um, it, was there really a lot of tech companies? You know, uh, and, you know, I, I came back to Vietnam to visit a lot as a tourist, and you know, you see your relatives and. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, mostly uh, um, it, it's about kind of like, you know, giving back kind of, uh, um, you know, but, but I mean, meaning like, uh, you know, you wouldn't be exposed to, wow, you know, this like this group of entrepreneurs that's young and hungry and really scrappy and building, you know, great startup that could one day be a unicorn, um, you know, and then, and then, uh, uh, you know, so um, 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 the, um, the, the, the the IDG partners that uh, founded the the fund uh, Henry um, he he basically introduced me to um, to the opportunity uh, of doing these seas in Vietnam and and uh, you know we met up a few time in Silicon Valley uh, um, uh, you know and, and he's actually quite well known as well um, you know so we, we met up a couple of times in Silicon Valley and, and one time he said you got to come back to Vietnam I want to show you uh, my company you know the companies that we 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 have uh, invested in. Uh, so you know, I, I um I made a I made a trip. Uh, I met up with all the all the uh, um, startups that that uh, the you know IDG have funded, uh, and one of them in particular was trying to do search uh, for Vietnam. And and this five technical guy, really young, you know, um, and and uh, really just like so so smart. Um, and, you know, I was really surprised, and I was like, wow, that's amazing. And then, you know, we started geeking out and they said, yeah, you know, we're building our own hardware too. And we're putting together hard disk and, and everything. So, so we can, we can, um, you know, we can index the, the internet. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Right. Unheard of. And, and was so impressed. And then I went back home, like, wow, starting to, to think about it and, and really seriously now thinking about it. I'm like, wow, this is, you know, so much more meaningful uh, to be able to back entrepreneurs like that, you know, and, and, and the impact that I would have. Compared to, you know, in Silicon Valley, there's a lot of good VCs, there's a lot of good companies, a lot of good people. And, and so it's, it's, it's much harder to have a big impact. Uh, but but anyway, um, then uh, I still was not decided. And then one day, um, uh, Henry took the team uh, to Silicon Valley and, uh, and he said, hey, James, um, come out, have lunch with us. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the Sokbae team, the, that's the name. Sokbae is a flying squirrel. Uh, Sok is a squirrel, anyway. Um, and and uh, so uh, we had lunch in, in Mountain View. I was like, hey, what are you guys doing here? And said, oh, yeah, we, we're meeting Eric Smith. What? Yeah, you know, Google is interested in Vietnam. They want to buy us, want to acquire us. I'm like, whoa, another unheard of, right? Like, it's, it's amazing. And um, yeah, so so uh, uh, after that, and 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 Henry told me the story. He's like, yeah, you know, after they met Eric, and uh, you know, he made an offer. So the guys kind of huddled together, and Henry's like, you know, this is life changing for you guys. It's also life changing money. <laughs> you know, you decide, right? Uh, you know, we we support you. 
And, uh, you know, they huddle in the room less than an hour. Like we thought, you know, it would take days for them to consider. Less than an hour, they came back and said, you know, we decided we're not going to sell. Like, wow, it's, it's, you know, so much guts and, and, and ambition. Um, anyway, so that's the story. And, and I was inspired. And I was like, wow, you know, I want to be help, helping those founders. I, I want to be able to see them through one day. Um, you know, and, and, and so, uh, you know, fast forward to today. I mean, Vietnam has... Uh, at least five or six unicorn now. Um, a, a few of them we invested, uh, or we knew the founders, and and, and uh, you know, kind of know about their journey, and, and um, yeah. So, uh, you know that that's uh, um, that's how it was back then. It's just uh, a lot of young people starting out. Um, the web, it, it was mostly just a website, like people setting up a website, and then maybe they technical people, uh, you know, so Vietnam has very strong technical talent in terms of software development. And even back then, there was still, they were starting to have uh, quite a lot of uh, people doing outsourcing and, and things like that. Um, so the talent's there, and then they started to build website, they started to do media, you know, like they do news uh, sites, and, and then they started to uh, getting into like setting up e-commerce websites and things like that. So we had a lot of those good company to back. Um, and then, you know, they did gaming also. So one of our very first investment was VNG. Uh, it was called Vina Game at that time. Um, and then they, they basically did online MMORPG uh, and um, immediately like profitable within a few few, uh, few months and then became like a rocket ship, right? So we're like, wow, you know, it's, uh, it's a huge opportunity. And, and then not just for Vietnam, but for all, all of Southeast Asia. So, so uh, we did a few deals in Southeast Asia as well. Actually, one of the really interesting thing is like two months into it, um, you know, I was, uh, you know, I, I I just came back to Vietnam, kind of settled down, and like, oh, guess what? You're going back to San Francisco, uh, and guess what? We we actually invested in Friendster. Uh, we were the last investor into Friendster. You know, in that in that time, Friendster already lost in the U.S., but they were really strong in Southeast Asia, especially in the Philippines and in Indonesia. So we was thinking, like, you know what? Um, you know, we could we could pivot them to be the social network for Southeast Asia. So it was, it was uh, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, the wild, wild west uh, and, and uh, many, many moons ago. I mean, you know, a long time ago, 14 years ago. Yeah, so. That's, I mean, it's awesome to hear, right? That, that type of story gets me really excited too about the innovation that goes on even back then, right? And I think, I think it's good for us to hear this part of the story here in the U.S. Because as you know, I feel like most U.S.-based entrepreneurs are really center around the u.s <laughs> we really we don't really know what's going else else on the like we don't really know what else is going out like around the world and i think for me having this podcast speaking to people like yourself i mean obviously you did you did live in the states for a while i feel like the level of talent and entrepreneurship is the playing field is more similar than we really think it is right and it doesn't matter where you live at this moment i feel like you can be successful anywhere in the world because of technology that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, so Southeast Asia is becoming a really um, hot market for startups and for VCs. Um, you know, when when we were investing, nobody really know about Southeast Asia. We were super early, uh, and, and um, so IDG also had a, a fund in, you know, still have a, a really big fund in, in China. Um, and when IDG started investing in China, nobody knew or care about VC, even like the local uh, uh, Chinese, uh, um, you know, investors. And and um, you know the uh, uh, yeah, it, it took a while. But then after a few big wins, like almost everybody, there was a period of time I still remember. Uh, I was one of them. You know, everybody in Silicon Valley was was on a plane to to Shanghai or Beijing, especially the VC industry. Uh, if you go to first class, everybody, <laughs> maybe eight out of you know ten people were were were, were from Silicon Valley going to China. Um, but now, kind of that shift. So you know, it was China first, and then and then people were starting thinking about India. So there was a lot of interest in India, and then and then um, in Southeast Asia as a, a a region, even though many countries in Southeast Asia are pretty different and, and it's a very homogeneous uh, market, but like as a whole, Southeast Asia has inspired like the current sort of. Uh, um, imagination and, and you know th there's actually some really good track record as well for example sea group uh, started out as a game to garena um at that time and uh and and it's it's a at, at, at some point at its peak uh i think 200 plus billion uh, in valuation on the nasdaq um and then you know you hear like grab uh, which is like a, a uber for southeast asia they also listed 
uh, Go Jack is another group that started to do many other things, including being a, a, a super app. Uh, you know, so you know you hear about these these concepts a lot now in Southeast Asia, and and and, um, and so it's 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 it's, it's uh, and then a lot of VCs are coming here, and actually even a lot of the US VC are now starting to notice uh, Southeast Asia. For example. Um, you know, we were we were part of YC uh, Y Combinator. So um, Y Combinator actually in, uh, accepted quite a lot of uh, quite quite a few uh, you know ma many startups in in Southeast Asia, in, including Vietnam. Um, and uh, you know that brought so every single time. Uh, so so just a little bit of background. Uh, YC is uh, is a, an accelerator, a very uh, famous accelerator in Silicon Valley, um, and uh, you know, they usually have these demo day uh, every uh, twice a year in the summer and then in the winter. Uh, and in the demo day, they would in, invite all the who's who's in, in Silicon Valley uh, venture capital, uh, you know, all the, all the really uh, famous VCs uh, to come in and, and, and look at the YC companies. Um, but because of the pandemic, that actually grew. I mean, they were, they were, they were pretty much uh, forced to do everything on Zoom. And then because, you know, Zoom is, is unlimited participation and invite and you're not you're not limited to a geography anymore like people don't have to fly in anymore right so all of a sudden you know uh, for example in my batch uh you know we pitched to uh, more than a thousand people investors i mean not pitched to but like a thousand more than a thousand people listen to to i can't share the exact number but definitely more than a thousand uh, listen to to the to the demo day uh to the pitch uh of the yc company so because of that like a lot of attention are now and, and money have have invested in southeast asia and in vietnam and and, and and you know then these people are also now telling other investors about it yeah i mean absolutely right i think for a long time southeast asia was the best kept secret and obviously exploding yeah. gdp and a young workforce in vietnam plays a huge factor very young yes. yeah and I think like even for us, right, we, through the Asian Hustle Network, as we're hiring more people overseas, like Vietnam is one of our targets. And to our surprise, yeah. the talent is there. Like the techno talent, even the writing talent is there too. Like That's right. you may not, may not even notice, like some of the stuff written on our social media are from our team overseas, right? Sure. And oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. And it's crazy because the level is there and I, I think it's an amazing thing, right? And I do want to focus a little bit more about... James Vong, the founder of Infina, right? What is it like starting a company in Vietnam? What are the challenges of scaling, finding market product market fit, hiring talent in Vietnam, regulations, government? What's the, what's the difference? Tell us that. The difference, okay. Uh, there's a lot of difference. Um, there's also a lot of similarities. Um, uh, let's start with the difference. Um, so. Uh, Vietnam is uh, surprisingly uh, quite an easy place to to start something. Uh, you know, due to the fact that that uh, things are relatively lower cost. Um, but I I think uh, in general the the, the mega trend that that has uh, helped you know the, the 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 sort of the volume of startups um, that was started uh, was was because you know starting a company nowadays is, is super uh, easy and super low cost. Anyway, even in the U.S., um, uh, I, I guess the biggest barrier is like, are you willing to leave your nice paying, uh, 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 you know, uh, paycheck uh, <laughs> and convince other people to leave their nice paying paycheck to join you uh, in, 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 in the quest, right? Um, but, you know, like uh, things like AWS, uh, you spin up anything and, and you don't have to worry about even setting up servers. Uh, so, but back in the day, <laughs> we invested in companies um and we had to hand carry i remember i was in singapore i was like okay uh how many servers do you guys want to buy <laughs> so i was hand carrying these servers uh, from singapore because it's much uh, uh first of all it's really hard to access um like the really latest uh, models in, in in vietnam um um you know there's local distributor but they, they're definitely not not uh, importing the best uh you know so hand carrying those things back and stuff like that but but anyway um it's still quite easy to to say okay, look, um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to start something, uh, and and uh, of course, you know, you 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 uh, you're not gonna have salary for a while and all of that, but you know, because uh, living standard and and I mean, cost of living is really cheap, so you can you can afford to do that, um, without without suffering too much, right? Um, 
you know, so that part was easy, but, but everything else was um, more challenging in that, for example, um, you know, uh, yeah, even just like setting up uh, uh, servers, you, you know, you had to go to Singapore to buy it, um, you know, at that time. And uh, the really cool thing uh, was that there's a lot of uh, good developer that are relative, actually super cheap at that time. Now they're getting a little bit more expensive for, for various reasons, but, um, and as expected, you know, even like cost uh, engineering costs in China and India has gone through the roof. Um, but uh, cheap talent, that was good, easy to start. You can, you know, you can survive without money for a long time uh, in a low cost place. Uh, and the environment is nice. I mean, you can actually have help for everything. You know, you can have a driver, you can have people who cook for you. Uh, so th those, those steps help a lot. And if you have a family, it also help a lot, um, you know, uh, uh, even, um, you know, your spouse could be, uh, um, working and, you know, you have people taking care of your kids, uh, relatively inexpensively, uh, and, and those types of things are good. Uh, of course, some, some people even say like, yeah, you know, you guys are living like Kings and Queens in, in Southeast Asia, you know, it's not, it's not all wrong, but, <laughs> um, but so lifestyle is great. Uh, so, so, uh, those things makes it easy. The hard thing was, um, you know, the people are really smart, but they take they, they take a while to really understand um, how to really do things. Uh, you know, in Silicon Valley, for example, as the other extreme, where you know you hit somebody on the street, and likely they have uh, work at a startup, they have scaled some product really fast from zero to 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 millions of people. Um, they know how to do a lot of things really well. Um, they have learned from the best companies, uh, you know, the, the Fangs and other very successful, you know, startups that they they were part of. Um, you know, so that the talent pool there uh, had a lot of experience. But compared to here, it's like they really smart raw talent. But you have to teach them. You have to teach them a lot of things. Um, and uh, so that was rewarding for me. Actually, it was it was like okay. I'm, I'm kind of like uh, doing both things that I really like. One is start my own company, but the other one is to mentor people and to really, you know, uh, and then you get a lot of energy and inspiration from the young people that are so smart. And I, I continue to, to really like drive on, on, on that, um, you know, and, and, and yeah. So um, uh, I guess those are some of the, so the, the, you know, some of the things, but you know, then of course, uh, if you're too small, um, then regulation wise, nobody really care about you. Um, you know, sometimes like, let's say if you do like a shop or something, maybe like, you know, then you have, you know, the local authority kind of giving you a hard time, but you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's just knowing how to navigate that. Right. Uh, you know, and, um, uh, yeah, I, I guess, you know, um, there, there's there's uh, things that you have to get used to, you know. Um, uh, you know, sometimes people, for example, like uh, they come for an interview and then they never show up uh, when you make an offer. I think that's that's happening now everywhere. <laughs> so so it's not so it's not so bad anymore <laughs> in terms of like the disparity. Uh, but you know the professionalism and, and things like that. Um, but but now uh, I have to say uh, um, is it, that um, the workforce has gotten so much better. Even the uh, the startup pool has gotten so much better. I, I do enjoy investing. I invest in a company that you and I both know really well. Uh, I mean, you feel free to mention it, but I'm not sure you you know I'm allowed to mention it. Um, but uh, uh, you know, uh, I I I see so many good startups, so many good talent, so many good people to hire. Uh, so the environment has changed a lot from 14 years ago. I love it. I love hearing that. And, you know, shout out to Vicetra. That's the company that James yeah. was talking about. <laughs> it's funny because James yeah. invested into Vicetra and the founder of Vicetra invested in the Asian Hustle Network. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Talking about, uh, yeah, very, very connected to paying forward. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's awesome hearing those key differences too, right? And I can't, and I absolutely agree. I feel like, yes, talent is there, but it does, it, but the culture is not quite there yet. Right? That's right. That's right. That's right. So that's culture, a good way to put it. Yeah, I mean, in time, I feel like it'll be more in line, but definitely do expect a lot of handholding at the beginning. You can't just throw someone a project and expect them to like run with that project. Most likely, they're gonna run it the wrong way. It's gonna take more time than than we're than if you were to stop and explain it really well, <laughs> type of thing, right? And yeah. you know, in American culture, it's like we hate micromanagers, we hate babysitting. Um, we hate being told what to do. It's just the American culture, right? But in 
in Asia, it's slightly different. I mean, people do appreciate the, the, the catering a bit, right? Because these managers actually become the most caring people for the next people that you hire. Right. And it's super important that you do take your time. And it's a young workforce. It'll eventually get there. But I, I do think that talent wise, skill wise, writing wise, technical wise, it's there already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 In terms of in terms of the um the the the, the creative, like uh doing video editing, doing videos, doing writings, uh, I think it's it's quite there. Um the the software development is not not too savvy. Actually, Vietnamese engineers are better than Okay, I I don't want to, you know, put in an absolute term, but but you know, this is uh, not just my own opinion. Um, I think you can ask around, and the general sort of consensus is that Vietnamese engineers are, are better than other uh, markets in, in Southeast Asia, uh, and uh, definitely comparable to to uh, uh, Chinese and and Indian engineers, uh, and even um, you know, some of them are on par with with uh, with uh, Silicon Valley engineers. That's why the outsourcing company have been very successful because you know the quality is just really high. Yeah, I mean that's awesome to hear. I mean, I, I love hearing stuff like that for sure. So, James, so what is next for you and Vina? What is your goal for the next for finishing up this year and you know the next five to ten years? Yeah, just uh, a brief introduction, you know, about Infina. Um, so we are a, a retail investing app, um, and uh, we allow people to do passive investing, getting into like mutual funds and getting into uh, fixed income products. Um, but we also allow people to do active trading so they can actually buy and sell uh, stocks. Um, and currently just all uh, uh, Vietnam uh, asset classes. Um, and actually Vietnam has a very strong uh, stock market uh, booming stock market until of course the past two two months uh, when everything kind of uh, starting with the US market crashing um, kind of went down downhill a little bit um, but um, uh, you know last year for example uh, you know the country added 1.3 million new brokerage accounts um, and uh, uh, you know uh, that 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 you know compared to a year ago that was a 400k and a year ago is only 200k so it it you know a lot of people started to participate in the uh, the stock market um uh, you know as well as the crypto market unfortunately um you know uh, uh and that's a global trend right like you see that everywhere including in the us young people are starting to um uh, get interested in investing uh and they want an app that's really easy to use and so in the, in, in the us you see phenomenons uh um, like you know, Robin Hood or Weibo that that uh, uh, you know grew so fast, um, and and Coinbase as well. So uh, we we um we set ourselves to be an investing app that is uh, multi asset. So we could do everything um, that you you know that's investable, uh, including uh, gold and, and real estate. Um, and you know we started out in fractional ownership in real estate actually. Um, so it's a, it's a multi-asset class. And um, so, you know, we have a lot of work uh, cut out for us uh, and, and not only in the near term, but, but for the long term as well. Um, and, uh, you know, what we really want to do now is actually to build a really strong team. Um, and so uh, uh, maybe if you, if you allow me, uh, you know, we are hiring chief of staff. Um, so that's kind of like a, a founder CEO in training, uh, and, you know, that going to work directly with me. So anybody who... Um, you know, uh, uh, super smart and want to be a founder one day, uh, want to see how it's like um, to, 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 to do a company uh, and, and be able to see it, see it all from my view because that person would have that access. Uh, and um, I wouldn't call it like an apprentice or anything, but the chief of staff is, is, uh, is, is the, you know, it's, it's, it's really like, it's not an assistant, it's like a right-hand person. Um, and uh, it's, it's great training to, um, uh, to be a, uh, uh, you know, for a few people that want to be a founder later on. Um, and, and again, like the thing that you learn from us is not, it's not, uh, uh, you know, like, oh, you know, uh, is it transferable stuff? Cause you know, it's, it's for Vietnam. It's, it's, uh, we are using the latest tools. We are doing everything that's um, sort of the latest best practice. We're doing a lot of like hacking growth and building viral root loops and building growth loops. And, you know, we, um, uh, uh, yeah, we, we were, were definitely pretty advanced. Um, so you will learn a lot. Um, so anyway, I don't want to go on too much about that. But th that's kind of the plan is to build up a really strong team. Uh, of course, also a very strong engineering team. Uh, we have been really focused on staffing up on that. 
um, and, and then a strong uh, senior management team. Um, we, we also have uh, quite, quite uh, a strong team already, um, you know, but we're just going to keep building that out. So it's like people and then product and then profit, right? So we, we're going to nail down the people and then we're going we're gonna, to um, get a really awesome product. It's, it's quite good, um, but, you know, we have a lot of room to make it even better. Um, and, and of course, expanding out to have more offering um, to, to, to at, at one point be able to, to offer um, a lot more uh, financial services on, on, on that. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love hearing all that, you know, and I, I wish you nothing but the best for Infina. It sounds like an awesome product. I mean, absolutely right, especially coming to a market like Vietnam where I feel like the average consumer spending power is actually increasing day by day, right? You see things, it's not just inflation, you see things get more expensive because the country is doing really well GDP-wise. So that's awesome to hear. I feel like you're in definitely in the right place in the right time. And James, we do have one final question. And that question is, what is one thing that you would do differently coming to Vietnam as an entrepreneur in VC in 2008? What's the one thing you do differently? Uh, I would do differently now, or I wish I could go back in the past and change it. That's, let's say let's say you, you wish you can go back in the past and change it. Well, I I, uh, I came I came into VC after being a uh, an engineer and a product manager, uh, you know. So I never really never really uh, know what it's like to be a founder. Uh, never having done it, um, you know. So I think if I were to go back um, and change something, I think I would uh, I would say that I, I would. Um, try to uh, learn more from the founders instead of uh, trying to help them um, because it, it, it was it was the wrong mindset. It was like, okay, um, we're going to be here. We're going to give you capital. We're going to give you expertise. We have the vision into the future. You know, we've seen markets like US and Silicon Valley and we've seen like even what's happening in China and India. So we're going to bring all of that to you guys right? You know, you should listen to us, uh, you know, um, and, and in a way, yes, that's a really good part uh, of, of our value add, including hiring people from overseas, talents from anywhere in in the world and, and you know, through our global network and then bring them to Vietnam, right? Um, but, but I mean, like, I wish that not just myself, but all of us uh, ha should have been more, you know, closer to the ground. I think that there's definitely a lot of investors who are kind of parachuting in, you know, kind of looking at the big picture and, and it's like, oh, you know, um, yeah, I don't know. Is, uh, are you sure it's going to happen in Vietnam? Or, or, or the opposite is like, oh, this will definitely happen in Vietnam. Like, you know, you know, let's do this model because it's so successful in China. This, this is the same thing in Vietnam. Okay, so so those are the things that, that, that um, turn out to be all wrong. Like not all wrong, but mostly wrong, right? Um, things have to be really localized for certain models. And then for some other model, actually, you don't need to be localized. Um, so for example, like, uh, you know, before people were always saying like, yeah, you know, F Facebook is not going to work in Vietnam. And then actually Facebook took over, um, you know, and, and uh, um, uh, you know, some people are like, yeah, you know, TikTok's not going to go anywhere. Like, uh, who's going to use that? And then and it's also like it took over too. <laughs> um, you know, so I think uh, th those are the things that, I would say like, okay, let's first of all be, uh, ha have a much clearer view about reality, but the only way that you can have a clear view about reality of the mar of the, the market that you're interested in, whether that's Vietnam or some other market in Southeast Asia is, is to spend a lot of time talking to the really smart people. And who are they? Who They are the, the founders, the, the hustler, you know, the people that's like having to deal with it every day, like really, having to struggle through all the challenges and, 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 and you know, so, so once you really understand that and then, and then you kind of start to then kind of combine that with a lot of the sort of, you know, framework that you have and, and thesis that you have, um, then, then that, that would be a super good combination. Yeah. I mean, absolutely agree with what you said, right? Keeping your eyes to the ground, not just, not just having the mindset that that you're gonna come into a situation helping the founder, but I think learning from them it's is very valuable. It's one of the best part of being an investor, right? Is you get to learn. That's right. Yeah, just because you yeah. have money doesn't mean you're smarter. 
but yeah, I mean, how can our listeners find out more about you and, and Fina and reach out to you online? Yeah, so you can uh, you can Google Infina. Unfortunately, it's a very popular name. So uh, our website is infina.vn. Um, but uh, if you if you search for James Vong, uh, V U O N G on LinkedIn, and then with the uh, Infina name, then I'm sure you'll find me on LinkedIn. And I would love to connect uh, on LinkedIn. And that's the easiest way. Um, you can email me too. Um, you know, it's James at infina.vn. Um, but uh, you know, usually LinkedIn is the easiest way. Uh, cause sometimes, you know, I get a lot of email and I, I might miss, I missed it. Yeah, so. Awesome. We'll include all that in the show notes, but James, thank you so much for being on the show today. No, thank you, Brian. Uh, again, a huge fan of you guys and, and of the community, uh, saw a lot of really inspiring story. Uh, glad I have a chance to share mine. Uh, and I wish the best of luck with everybody, uh, in the community. And, and, uh, if you happen to, to want to join us for some reason, uh, do reach out. You know, uh, we have a need for many talent, especially chief of staff and um, engineering. So awesome! Thank you, James. Great. And put that in the show notes. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. All right. Okay.